time is 7 46 a.m good morning the news headline yobi naf jets bombs buhari village over Boko Haram iswap camps the news in full fighter jets of the nigerian air force naf on wednesday bombed a village in Yunusari local government area of yobi state daily post learned that the village identified as Buari was used as Buari's home state uh, was used as a hideout by Boko Haram and Iswap members. Speaking to Daily Post, a source said terrorists used the village as a camp from where they attack both Yunusari and Gaidam areas of the state. However, the source, who wished not to be named, said that the attack by the military was carried out after proper gathering of intel. He said, it happened in Buari village in Yunusari local government, very close to Gaidam and Boko Haram members are using that community as a hideout attack to attack Gaidam and Yunusari. The community has a thick vegetation cover, which gives Boko Haram a good place for them to camp. They have converted the village to one of their camps. The military, on getting the credible intel, were able to confirm that the village is a place for Boko Haram and Iswap, and today they used both aerial and land bombardment on the village. Scores of Boko Haram members were neutralized, and a few civilians sustained injuries. The injured civilians were evacuated and taken to Gaidam General Hospital. That village has been a threat. All attacks on Gaidam were, doctor were doctored from that place. Now that the village has been bombarded, maybe we will have a little peace. And this is uh, the the home state of President Muhammadu Buhari, his hometown uh, in Katina State, was actually is actually now a hideout for the Boko Haram members that are attacking uh, that community. You know, hiding in the Gaidam uh, and Yunusari place, which is actually the you know home, the village and home town of um, President Muhammadu Buhari. This is not just large-scale military forces directed by high-level strategists sitting in their bunkers, fighting it out on a marginal line. This is greed, criminal enterprises, geopolitics, a whole world of completing factions with nobody able to impose order across the country. Lots of different groups, lots of lines of authority, lots of outside players. That is why it is so complex and so hard to bring to a conclusion. Because, essentially, the conclusion of the war has to be some stable political settlement. It has zero percentage of happening. That is why, even though Nigeria has been winning the war, all it takes is a single attack for the military to be criticized. The military is never going to give up. According to reports, the Nigerian Air Force has neutralized scores of bandits operating in Zamfara including their leader, Kachala Aru, in a school at Gidan Rijia village in Galadi. When they gathered for a meeting, the war is surely coming to an end, but not as quickly as wanted by Nigeria. The time is 7.57 p.m. Good evening and the news analysis. The writer has actually come on air to express that the Air Force neutralizing bandits in Zafara State, does that mean that it is the end of banditry? And he cited uh, some knowledge there that Nigerians believe that, you know, the end of banditry should be like it happens in the Hollywood movies where, you know, soldiers kill the, band, uh, the, the, the attackers and it ends there. He said that the uh, thoughts of that kind of unconditional surrender can only be seen in movies and it is not always the fact he said that the nigerians think as if counterinsurgency is a boxing match when terrorists and bandits and you know actually attack it never ends and he said the reason why the media always propagates notion like winning war and that it will come to a end and all those stuffs is because they uh they they find it more intriguing and a drama like to you know to attract more viewers and likes now it is not because they do not know uh, it is not actually out of ignorance because they are educated folks but because you know to attract much more viewers and likes that is why they are doing that 
You know, can, he said, can you remember America declaring an end to the war against Al-Qaeda? And neither was there a former surrender when Bin Laden was killed. He said, the conflict between the Assad regime and ISIS was also the mirage of conflict in Syria. He said, and there was no white flag. So, the death of the ISIS founder, who is Abu Bakr Baghdadi, did not even bring end to the war. He said, if you want to understand the nature of this war, then you have to think about the medieval times. And this is not just a large-scale military kind of force, you know, directed by some high-level strategists, you know, sitting in one bunker and like as in the movie, you understand, that what is actually going on now, as per the banditry case, is just a matter of greed, criminal enterprises, geopolitical, you know, and um, a whole world of competing factions which nobody able to impose order across the country. A, you know, a nation where we, where we, we now have kidnapping to be a very uh, legal and legal kind of business. You understand that, you know, where uh, they find it as the fastest uh, means to get rich or to even get funds to further sponsor their criminal enterprises and criminal activities. A lot of different groups, a lot of lines of authority, outside players, and a whole lot of people are involved in this kind of case. And that is why it is so hard to come to a conclusion that, you know, the war would come to an end or uh, like that, like that, and there wouldn't be any form of, you know, uh, Boko Haram or terrorism or ISWAP or anything like that. He said that uh, the conclusion of the war has to be some stable political settlement. It has zero percentage of happening because all these things that are happening are actually politically influenced. And it has, is, uh, you know, that was why Nigerians, though, has been in, winning the war at all times, but it takes a single attack for the military to be criticized. We all remember that the United States has extended support to Nigerians to further assist them to make sure that they detect those who are sponsoring the Boko Haram and other ter terrorism in the country. And there is another person that actually cited an instance that if the United States of America, as said by Mary Leonard, actually allows, uh, you know, actually expose those who are sponsoring terrorism in the country, that if it happens to be that these sponsors are cabinet of the President Muhammad Buhari's regime, what would they do? Would they allow those people to be, you know, uh, to be taken to court, and, uh, to court and be convicted legally? So, and that is to say that all these things are politically sponsored. Like, you know, there was an interview by a Commodore some times ago on Chinese television where he said that, Yes, some of these cabinet members of President Muhammad Buhari are involved. And that is why he said that, uh, this writer is saying that the war is surely coming to an end, but not as quickly as Nigerians envisage it. Thanks for listening. Good morning.